Thank you very much. Um, we have called this press conference Next Maidan. Uh, members from the UNGL group in the European Parliament are back from a visit to the Ukraine. And uh, we have taken our responsibility that Mr. Ransdorf, who had been part of the op official observation trip of the European Parliament's delegation to the elections last uh, Sunday, uh, will speak on the question of the uh, elections to the Verkhovna Rada, uh, the um, 26th of October. And I will concentrate just now on the uh, main conclusions of a trip carried out by the by members of our group <coughs> to the Ukraine. We visited uh, Kiev as well as the region Krivoy Rok uh, in central eastern part of the Ukraine. We had talks uh, with official representatives from the government in the Ukraine. We had talks with uh, <coughs> trade unionists and independent trade unionists, with civil civil society stakeholders, uh, with uh, with the OSCE mission, with the UNHCR mission. So we uh, had uh, the attempt to get a more close understanding what is going on in this country. And I would say that uh, despite all debates, discussions we have here in Brussels as well as in a uh, lot of other capitals of the European Union about elections, about war, about the relationship towards the Russian Federation and the in, uh, um, inference of the Russian Federation into the Ukrainian affairs. Uh, I would say that all these uh, problems uh, raised in the political space are neglecting the real problems uh, of the society. Um, we have seen a booming capital, Kiev, and we have seen deep rising any visitor areas, villages and city uh, in the rural areas of this country. So there is really a difference between that, what is the surface um, in Kiev and in the depth uh, in, uh, in the region, uh, for example, around Krivoy Rok. We have seen a very brutal exploitation of the extractives in the country of minerals <coughs> and that is going on the co at the cost of the people working there as well as of the environment. Um, all the conflict uh, around uh, in the country is at least a war, a struggle for gas, it's shell gas, it's a war for the rare minerals, earth, uh, rare earth and um, rare minerals. And all these conflicts are heating up the uh, contradictions in the country as well as the uh, purposes uh, for uh, this internal question. And I would say that the elections, as we have seen them uh, as an attempt to find solutions for a new governance in this country are still going beyond this uh, social reality. Uh, I would stress that we need really a structural rethinking and as in the, in the elections there was no choice between the social uh, differentiation in the country, so the was a continuation of uh, ongoing political elites struggling for uh, the power. Two thirds of our talks have shown that there is a deep distrust into the ability also of the new elected members of the Bachov Narada and the other political stakeholders really to find a way to take on board the wishes, uh, the expectations of the citizens in this country. And uh, to make it more clear, uh, if there will be very soon no radical change in this attitude, there will be another Maidan in this country. That means the political stakeholders have to understand that they finally have to answer these needs of the citizens in the country and that the problems of the people must be put at first and then 
the interest of the economic development, etc., which of course is linked each to another. But um, that is a central problem as I would describe that situation. Maybe different from that what Miloslav uh, Ransdorf then will say is that I haven't seen in Kiev uh, a direct uh, understandable right-wing sect or radical fascist. I haven't seen directly uh, bigger military troops. Um, we have seen an empty airport in Dnepropetrovsk, uh, six uh, small uh, 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 airplanes from the military. Uh, but of course I know that in the country is going on a war. And this war is just uh, also an attempt to to take out of the of the reality to solve the social problems. Um, <coughs> it is also clear that the Russian oligarchs acting in the Ukraine and their linkage to certain interests of the uh, political and economic elites in the Russian Federation are part of the problem. And also Gazprom, as well as Exxon or Shell, are responsible for these ongoing struggles in the Ukraine. And also still uh, play, uh, playing a role, oligarchs in that country, Abramovich, Ahmetov, Kolomoisky, Pinchuk, Firtash, and others, they have a say on what is possible or not. And that's why I have stressed this necessity for the new elected structures in the country finally to call the problems as they are and to, f and to give a certain understanding. In the foreign ministry, we have heard <coughs> that it is only the Russian Federation <coughs> who has to change its mode. And of course, I agree with all those who want to stress that Russia must stop its interference into the internal affairs of the Ukraine. But the, spi the, the spiral of violence in the country is going on and going on because no side will give up a certain polarization of this <coughs> struggle between the different active political and economic stakeholders. Then it means we have to stop the spiral at any cost because uh, also the international observership like the OSCE or the UNHCR uh, groups and uh, representatives in the country which very limited resources are not able of course to interfere into a ceasefire uh, to uh, 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 um, making it easier uh, for, for the parties to solve that. So uh, it was in the foreign ministry directly expressed that also the OSCE is part of the problem. <coughs> so uh, I wouldn't want mm. to uh, only to say, yes, also the European um, community, as the European Union, as the OSCE member states from Europe, as uh, member states and other international organizations should not uh, be, uh, should not become um, um, an instrumentalized structure in these disputing uh, circles, but it must be, uh, be able that all sides are expressly clearly their interest and that the citizens of the country finally have to understand what is going on. Um, I want finally, before giving the floor to, to uh, Mr. Ransdorf, uh, say two small personal uh, important things. I understood that the woman we have spoken <coughs> with different levels and different uh, uh, local uh, localities have expressed we don't want to give our sons or husbands to another round of mobilization in the war. We, we are not agreeing that they will fight for the interest of oligarchs in this country. So I think this call from women um, uh, is a clearly expression uh, in which way in which direction uh, a lot of citizens in this country are thinking. And the representative of the UNHCR has very emotionally stressed 
that also the internal displaced persons, which are going over one million just now, um, are already facing a desolidarization of, uh, of people in the regions where they are. So a lot of uh, Eastern Europeans who have fled the war in the eastern part of the country came to the western part. Uh, they are facing there just now at the streets attacks because um, a lot of people are, have said to them, uh, we are fighting for your interests in the east and you are coming here and want to live on our coast. So I mean, this is again uh, re uh, restructuring the whole society and finally that means we need political means for overcome this current situation. Thank you. So I will continue. Ladies and gentlemen, I was uh, among 15 uh, official observers uh, in the mission in uh, uh, these elections to, to Verkhovna Rada in uh, the Ukraine. And I have to say that this mission was very difficult because, you know, Ukraine is uh, one of the biggest countries in Europe at all. Even after uh, this, uh, these events in Donbass and Crimea, uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, this uh, secession of uh, Donbass and Crimea had also some impacts on the results of, of uh, elections. But I have to say that uh, for uh, the reality now in. Uh, uh, Ukraine, um, the social tension is very important because uh, 100 richest uh, Ukrainians have the share of national property 38 percent, 38 percent, two fifths practically. And <coughs> I have to say that <coughs> there is enormous uh, wealth on uh, the one hand and enormous poverty on the other hand. For example, now, uh, the average income in uh, average loan in, uh, in uh, the Ukraine is uh, 3,000 hryvnas, and it is uh, calculated into euros, 150 euros. I have to say that um, uh, I organized my work there in a different way than the others, uh, other observers. <coughs> I visited Ukraine two uh, months before elections uh, on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. So I visited many polling stations. Uh, these uh, district polling stations, for example, in Krivoyrok are four. In uh, Dnipropetrovsk are seven. There are seven uh, district polling stations. And also the small polling stations, I visited too, many of them. But uh, it is uh, impossible naturally to, to see everything because in uh, the Ukraine they are, according to um, uh, information of uh, Mr. Akhendovsky, the head of uh, Central uh, Election uh, Commission, um, 32, six, 32 uh, six polling stations in the, in the whole country. So for uh, the comparison in the uh, Russian Federation, there are 93,000 polling stations. So it is uh, practically a third of uh, this vast territory of uh, Russian Federation as uh, to the quantity of uh, polling stations. I have to say that um, I saw, uh, I organized my work also in the way, in the way that I had uh, the local network, local network, my collaborators uh, collecting informations for me uh, um, and so I uh, have now uh, many informations which were not uh, penetrating, were not penetrating into uh, mediatic, mediatic uh, world. I would say. For example, for example, um, in this uh, in this time, <coughs> I saw many abuses, and I have been uh, informed about many abuses. Uh, against uh, election law. For example, uh, I have evidence that in some uh, uh, districts uh, these uh, original protocols were sent in the proper form to the Central Election Commission and uh, returned uh, in a falsified way. Because, uh, 
they were in the process uh, of transfer of data falsified. So it is uh, some, some, uh, something uh, hardly tolerable in the European uh, political world. So I have seen intimidation, omnipresence of weapons, of uniforms, military uniform uh, became, uh, I would say, um, fashionable in uh, the Ukraine. So uh, omnipresence of people in uniforms, especially in, uh, in Dnepropetrovsk region, where there is now the central uh, region for the presence of, for the influence of uh, right sector. Uh, by the way, uh, Dmitro Yarosh uh, had the uh, candidature in uh, the 39th uh, district uh, in Dnipropetrovsk region, and so uh, it is very important that uh, also Mr. Kolomoisky, the governor of uh, Dnipropetrovsk region, is uh, very intensively cooperating with the right sector. And uh, this right sector was, um, uh, on the one hand, used for intimidation of the people uh, to make, uh, I would say, the consensus, the election consensus. And on the other hand, I have to say that uh, uh, I have informations, verified informations, that uh, in uh, the polling stations where there was a danger of the victory of uh, so-called uh, of the so-called non-European forces, like these radicals or communists. So uh, many of these polling stations were not opened. So it is it is uh, something very strange. And uh, I have to say that uh, this uh, mm, the presence of the people with arms, with weapons in uh, these polling stations uh, is also documented and so it is, uh, in my opinion, clear intimidation of uh, the voters. Something, uh, I would say, um, alarming, alarming uh, fact for me is uh, the social situation in the Ukraine. And uh, for me, alarming uh, feature of these elections was that uh, this economic uh, program economic program and uh, economic uh, economic situation is maybe the most important for uh, ukrainians rank and file so um, this economic uh, program was not the part of the debates before before elections uh, economic issues were missing so it is, it is something, uh, something very strange. And I have to say, maybe with some exception of opposition bloc, no political party had, uh, uh, I would say, uh, consistent economic program. I have to say that um, uh, uh, this, uh, these economic facts are alarming, because before these political events of Maidan, um, this uh, GDP, GDP uh, uh, per capita in Ukraine, GDP in general, general, yeah, uh, uh, compared with uh, the year 1992, was only 45 percent. By the way, in uh, Belarus, which is uh, demonized by by Western press, Western media, this figure is 260%, uh, is, uh, enormous uh, difference, and I have to say that uh, Ukraine is a uh, comparatively very rich country. Three percent world reserves of uh, coal, the reserves of coal are for 400 years. Three percent of world reserves of iron ore, uh, enormous reserves of mangan, uh, enormous reserves of uranium, which is not used. And uh, I have to say that uh, um, a very interesting fact is the quantity of black soil. Black soil, uh, the reserves of black soil are the biggest in the world. They have, Ukrainians have even more black soil than, uh, than uh, the Chinese. And uh, despite this fact, Ukraine is in the state of, uh, the state bank in the, uh, is in the situation of 
the technical default, technical default. And uh, these questions were not discussed openly in uh, during the election campaign. My, um, I have to say that uh, this led to very deformed uh, presence uh, in uh, the polling stations because uh, this uh, participation was uh, slightly hi um, uh, higher than uh, than uh, the forecast. The forecast was 40 percent, and uh, but uh, the overwhelming majority of the people uh, involved in the election process were uh, aged people, all the strata of the population. So when I pose this question of uh, this low interest of younger people in the uh, election process and uh, the uh, uh, decisive participation of the aged uh, people, the older strata of the population. So President Poroshenko replied that uh, uh, maybe it is true, but uh, the young people are on the candidate lists, like his son in the town of Vinica. Uh, Vinica is uh, connected with uh, the political career of uh, Mr. Poroshenko. And he's uh, 22 years old, if I uh, remember it correctly. So maybe this is uh, the case which uh, should uh, convince us that uh, this participation of a younger generation in uh, elections is, uh, is true. I have uh, many, many other uh, observations from, uh, from this election process and uh, my um, conclusion from all these uh, observations is that, that we can expect um, the social explosion in the Ukraine in the in next month. It is not uh, uh, something uh, hopeful, but I I would, uh, from this place, exhort uh, European politicians to make everything to avert this, uh, this uh, 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 risk, and uh, because it uh, would have uh, deep uh, m consequences also for all of us in the European Union, especially in Central Europe, um, because these people would uh, um, uh, travel for, for work, for jobs to Central Europe, like Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, etc. And uh, in the, during the winter time, there will be the problem with energy supply. Um, I don't know if you have information about it, but the reserves of energy coal in these uh, uh, in these uh, energy power plants are uh, only for two three days in normal situation it was three months now two three days the risk is enormous and uh, if you uh, would be interested so i can give you uh, figures in more detail thank you Merci Miloslav, merci à Helmut. Euh, on a déjà dépassé notre 30 minutes, mais si vous avez des questions, euh, c'est le moment. Please. Uh, Ukrainian News Agency Union, I have, I have a question for Mr. Schultz. Uh, you said, and I will quote, that uh, mothers uh, don't want to, to send his sons or uh, husband to the war with oligarchs. What, what do you mean? Do you see this war as a war of oligarchs? Because can you please clarify it? And uh, one remark on, the, on uh, your uh, introduction, because I uh, really don't uh, have a time to follow uh, everything in Ukraine, right sector and Kolomoisky oligarch, you said that they are somehow together uh, as I do understood, uh, I just uh, went to internet and titles uh, was uh, right sector declare war to Kolomoisky. Um, I wanted to, to quote uh, this woman expressing that they don't want to send their relatives 
so mainly the male relatives to the front, meaning that they are fed up with all these military issues, that they don't see any change in, uh, in, uh, in the society by using military means. So they, want to, they don't want to have a mobilization anymore, meaning this war is only helping the oligarchic structures, finally. It is not a question, finally, between Russia and the Ukraine, but that is uh, in, the, in the interest of getting resources and getting uh, the control over the, uh, the territories where the heavy industries is, is situated. Uh, and here uh, they are not any longer willing to, to, um, to give their, uh, their sons and their husbands to the military front for nothing by changing the conditions for, for, the, the, for the life conditions of themselves. I have a follow-up. Do you uh, really think that Russian uh, troops and Russian fighters, they are supporting Picha oligarch? Because I really don't understand what do you want to say. The war is unleashed in the East by several groups, uh, also in the interest of keeping their control in these territories, because they don't found any more their interests represented by the authorities uh, of the central government in Kiev. And that was the, one of the starting points uh, of, the, of the military conflict in that region, and that is also used and instrumentalized by certain groups from the Russian society or from the Russian elites in the country. But finally, the war is at the territory of the Ukraine and is taking men and uh, use from uh, different, there are Ukrainians who belong to the Russian nationality in the Ukraine, fighting against Ukrainians belong to the Ukrainian nationality or the Tatarian nationality, etc., etc. So that is a question of war between Ukrainians and that is used from all the other participating structures in instrumentalizing this war also for their internal uh, uh, aims. And that is already at least in the part we have sp uh, spoken with people, uh, a growing understanding that that is not changing their situation. The war is not changing the social situation in the Ukraine. So here we have, I think, also to convey the clear message that uh, the European Union has an, a, a great ch a challenge and task to accompany a, a, a peace solution uh, a, um, approach by putting all the sides together at the ne negotiation table. Other no means than political talks will lead to a change of the situation as it is today. So we had our, uh, we had also after election uh, process, we had uh, the talks with leading uh, Ukrainian politicians and it was uh, disappointing for me because, for example, Mr. Yatsenyuk, the Prime Minister and uh, the only winner of these elections, the only winner, uh, can see the only uh, reason for the difficulties behavior of uh, bad Russian guys. But uh, it is not, uh, not uh, true, because uh, many uh, things were, um, I would say, influenced by, by the people in the government. And uh, I remember the debate between Yatsenyuk and uh, one British journalist some three weeks ago. And uh, this British journalist, uh, stressed that uh, even Yatsenyuk is uh, uh, strengthening, I would say, this Russian factor in, in uh, internal crisis in the Ukraine and uh, uh, escalating, I would say, the tension between uh, the two countries and uh, asked uh, what will be the consequence if it uh, goes beyond a certain threshold. And he 
replied, Yatsenyuk uh, replied, so we will fight against Russia? Yes, because uh, with uh, our will and our conviction, deep conviction, we will uh, win. So it is for me something uh, very strange. I think that uh, war is not only um, used for manipulation of the society, but it is also uh, something very dangerous for economic life of the country. Uh, some analysis uh, show us that uh, uh, the war is the factor uh, uh, strengthening and radicalizing the, this danger of technical default, technical default, and uh, the bankruptcy of the state. So uh, I have to say that uh, I love Ukraine. I, am, uh, uh, I have many, many friends there. And so it is something affecting me uh, deeply. I have, uh, I have to say that, uh, that Ukraine has enormous um, um, uh, strength in uh, the qualification of the people. In these uh, factories and enterprises, especially in the field of mach machinery uh, industry. And uh, this should be adjusted and used for the future, because in the industrial sector, you have uh, 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 the hope for the future. So uh, I have to say that also the meeting with Mr. Mr. Klimkin was uh, for me disappointing. No deep analysis of the situation. And uh, uh, Mr. Poroshenko uh, uh, spoke in, I would say, political phrases. So. Uh, I have to say that that uh, it will be a very complicated uh, situation after after elections. It was also before. It was with the shooting in the, in the windows of Ukrainian Parliament. Uh, it was uh, this uh, this riot organized by Svoboda Party. Yeah, you remember this was uh, uh, very scandalous, but with these bombs and and uh, and gas. Uh, in the surroundings of the of the parliament, but I have to say that uh, this uh, this uh, these difficulties will be uh, something something uh, uh, complicating uh, complicating uh, complicating factor uh, after elections.